Hello and welcome to an overview of the initial phase of Legacy of the Void closed beta testing. We're psyched to stand on the cusp of the first public look at Legacy since BlizzCon 2014 and wanted to give you a summary of what you can expect given the last few months of development. Much has changed since our reveal last November and though we will not be able to cover all of it in this video, you can check out the companion blog posted on the StarCraft II website for a complete rundown. Let's take a look at what you'll see as we kick things off. Archon mode will be available for testing out of the gate, and we're anxious to get your thoughts. This mode allows two players to control a single army at the same time, presenting an exciting new cooperative experience of StarCraft II. With the support of a friend, there is the potential to play at a capacity you would be incapable of alone. It's also a great way to ease a friend into StarCraft who may have never played previously. Next, we have been experimenting with the game's economy system by adjusting the number of resources available at base locations. We are interested in providing a resource advantage to players willing to aggressively expand and defend their base count. We have also increased the accuracy of units that are issued attack move commands in order to make them more reliable in combat. We look forward to seeing how this seemingly small change can positively affect both new players and veterans seeking a more consistent response from their army. Let's take a look at multiplayer unit changes for the Terran race. The Terran army is bringing on a new addition with the Cyclone. The Cyclone is a ranged unit with the capability of locking on to a target and dealing high damage over a long duration. Both the affected unit and the Cyclone can move during lock-on, but if the units move too far apart, the link is broken and the Cyclone will stop dealing damage. The Siege Tank can now be picked up and dropped while remaining in Siege mode. The increased opportunities to harass and micro with this unit is in line with our top legacy goals for Terran. Battle cruisers have been upgraded with the ability to teleport anywhere on the map without vision. We are working hard to design an additional unit for the Terran roster and are interested in collaborating with players testing Void to identify a suitable option that will round out the army. Switching gears, let's take a look at a few elements on the Zerg side. New to the Zerg is the Ravager, a ranged unit capable of dealing high area damage with its corrosive bile ability. This ability has the added perk of being able to destroy Protoss force fields. A unit that practically needs no introduction, the Lurker. The Lurker is back in action as a solid splash damage option with massive range, able to outdistance most units and all base defense structures. We've made some notable changes to current Zerg units, starting with the Corruptor. We have given the Corruptor a new ability, Caustic Spray, which deals channel damage against structures that increases over time. Looking at the Viper, we wanted to add an ability that would counter mass air unit strategies. Introducing Parasitic Bomb. This ability places a damage over time effect on a targeted enemy air unit, dealing damage to it and any enemy units around it. If the targeted unit dies, the Parasitic Bomb will remain in play for its full duration, continuing to deal damage to any enemy air unit entering the targeted area. The Swarm Host will be filling a new role for Void, with significant changes that support harassment and mobility. Also, the Swarm Host's Locust can now be upgraded to fly in the late game. Lastly, let's turn our attention to the venerable Protoss. Making its first public debut, we give you the Adept. The Adept is a ranged unit that deals damage to ground units only, and is also capable of sending out a shade of itself to a target location. This shade can't deal damage or be damaged, but can be movement controlled. While the shade is deploying, an Adept will function normally in combat. Then, after a set duration, the Adept will teleport to the location of its shade. Also new in Legacy is the Disruptor. The Disruptor is a micro-intensive splash damage option that warps in at the robotics facility. This unit can go into an invulnerable energy form and after a short duration, deal burst damage to all units around it. To kick off changes to current Protoss units, let's talk about the Warp Prism and the Immortal. The Warp Prism can now pick up units from a distance, while the Immortal has exchanged its hardened shield passive for an activated shield ability. The Oracle sports a new ability, Stasis Ward, that lays a trap triggered when enemy units walk nearby. 
An activated stasis ward will temporarily freeze a ground army in time, preventing them from moving, attacking, or using abilities while simultaneously preventing them from taking damage. And lastly, the Tempest will no longer deal plus massive damage against air units. However, it has also received a new ability, Disintegration. Disintegration allows the Tempest to dish out a high amount of damage against the target unit, but spread out over a very long period of time. The changes coming with Legacy of the Void are a lot to take in. We truly think we've built a version of StarCraft II that is more fast-paced and exciting than ever before. Whether it is in the myriad of new micro options available for units and abilities, or the possibility of pushing aggressive resource strategies on multiple bases, Legacy of the Void will be full of opportunities to showcase yourself as a player. It won't be long now, as we will begin issuing closed beta invites starting on March 31st. Be sure to check out our companion blog for more info, and don't forget to sign up for the Legacy of the Void beta test to get involved.